This pumpkin flew more than 150 yards, powered by nothing but gravity and mechanical advantage. That's far enough to throw it through both field goals on a football field in one throw. Let me know if you want to see that and I'll try to make it happen. Although, it didn't always go quite that well. Backfire! I'm Parker, and welcome back to Engineering Illustrated. This is the story of how we designed and built a mostly record-breaking trebuchet. My friends and I built this trebuchet for the annual pumpkin toss competition put on by my university's ASME chapter. And this video actually covers two years of competition, but the design and build phase actually took place in about three weeks leading up to the 2023 competition. And then the day before the 2024 competition, we made repairs and upgrades. We engineering students aren't really known for our abundance of free time. So what even is a trebuchet? You may have heard of it before, but might not know exactly what it is. Trebuchets were medieval siege weapons that used a heavy counterweight to hurl large objects over or even sometimes straight through castle walls. People often get it mixed up with a catapult, but they are different. A catapult uses stored elastic potential energy. Think of something like a bow and arrow or a slingshot where you bend or stretch something to store energy, while a trebuchet uses the counterweight's gravitational potential energy, which is gained by lifting a heavy object high in the air. It's a simple concept, but even the medieval design has some pretty clever engineering behind it. Our competition has rules to make sure things stay safe, and they also don't want us to be able to throw the pumpkin out of the park that we were using, but we did our best to do that anyway. So here's the design critical rules. The max tower height is 15 feet. The footprint is also a 15 foot square and the maximum counterweight allowed was 300 pounds. However, I didn't want to have to go track down a trailer and so I added my own constraint that the footprint of the trebuchet had to fit within the bed of my truck, which was about four feet by eight feet or the size of a sheet of plywood. I also didn't want to have to go buy a bunch more material aside from the kit they gave us. So I restricted the max height to eight feet because that was the longest two by four that we got. I also only had access to 250 pounds of free weights that I was borrowing from a friend. And so with those tighter restrictions, we definitely had our work cut out for us. Before we built anything, I used a simulator called Virtual Trebuchet to test different geometries. I figured these dimensions would give us a decent ballpark regardless of which final design we settled on. I actually wrote a Python optimizer that let me test hundreds of configurations automatically. It literally just took control of my computer and brute force tested every length of arm, counterweight, and sling within a range that I had set, and then it kept track of which one performed the best. That was kind of a fun side quest, and if you're looking for a free side quest of your own, go to virtualtrebuchet.com and see if you can beat my record of 321 feet with just 250 pounds of counterweight. Tom Stanton has an interesting video on optimizing trebuchet parameters if you want to follow along with him. Links to both are in the description below. Now that we know approximately the size of the thing we're building, we need to settle on a design. And there are tons of variations on the original trebuchet. The classic trebuchet has an arm that rotates about a fixed pivot point. It's a relatively simple design that's easy enough to build with tools that were available in the Middle Ages, but in more recent history, people have come up with some pretty remarkable designs. Some designs allow the pivot to move, like the floating arm trebuchet. These are more complex, but their fancy motion helps transfer the potential energy from the counterweight into the projectile more smoothly and efficiently. There are whipper style trebuchets that hold the projectile next to the pivot instead of on the ground, allowing the counterweight to be moved higher for more potential energy. And some of the most complicated trebuchets I've ever seen are called Merlin trebuchets. They combine big drops, pulley systems, and wild geometry. These things are crazy. And then there are these things. They're called a walking arm trebuchet and are actually banned at our competition without a full design review because they can be both extremely powerful and quite unpredictable. The point is, there's a million designs that all technically fit the definition of a trebuchet, and I wanted to build one of the more interesting looking ones. This is our custom design. I call it the double cam floating arm trebuchet. We got the idea from this video. And as far as we can tell, that's the only other one in the world. It's got an arm that isn't fixed in place, similar to the floating arm design, but ours has these cams on the bottom third of the arm and on the frame instead of the linear rollers, like in the floating arm design. As the weight drops, the arm cam rolls along the frame cam, 
quickly changing the geometry during launch. Look at how the leverage changes throughout the launch sequence. It's kind of like shifting gears on a bike. We start in a low gear for max leverage to get the pumpkin moving, then we smoothly shift to a high gear to pull the kinetic energy back out of the falling counterweight to ensure that it's at max speed when the pumpkin is released. If you're interested in a deep dive into this trebuchet design, I'll have a video on that one day. In 2023, we spent pretty much all of our time that we weren't either working or in class to get this thing built, but it still came right down to the wire. We pretty much put all the time that we should have been using to get ready for our fluid dynamics midterm into building the trebuchet, so we decided to name it after our professor, who also happened to be the announcer at the event. It's flying, it's flying. Yeah! Every year there's at least one trebuchet that flies apart on the first throw, and I really didn't want to be that team. I had done some approximate calculation, reinforced areas of concern, and even assigned my brother specifically to be the triangulation guy, whose whole job it was to reinforce the frame with as many gussets as possible, as many triangles as could fit on there. But I still didn't really know if it was going to self-destruct on the first test. We were finally ready for that first test at about 2am the night of the event. Here we got the test. Yeah. Hey. The results were not catastrophic, so we called it a night. We would have to just tune it on the fly in the morning. Six hours later, it was time for final preparations for the competition. We showed up a little early to try and get some test shots in, while one of my friends actually went to take that fluid midterm I talked about. We added a few pounds of counterweight at a time until we were pretty sure it wasn't going to fly apart with the full weight. We only managed two shots before they shut the range down to get things set up for the event. Once we got going, we made our first official throw. Let's see what you can launch. Team Tondata. Oh, it's flying, flying. It was a little underwhelming coming in at 50-ish feet, but nothing broke, and it actually threw the pumpkin forward, which was, I thought, a pretty good start. It was time to see how much better we could make this thing through tuning. The first year of the trebuchet was pretty successful. We ended up throwing a max distance of a little over 300 feet and felt confident that there was more to be found in further tuning. Coming back in 2024, we made some minor repairs and upgrades. We had the full 300 pounds of counterweight thanks to some more borrowed weights and we were confident in our setup choices. time to go for distance, we went all in. We tried to find a small and smooth pumpkin for the big throws, and we felt like our tuning was dialed. After that, it all came down to the last throw.
final throw, 163 yards. That's a football field and a half, plus a little bit. This event is always a blast. Huge shout out to the ASME students who make it happen. It's really one of my favorite weekends of the year. For the final throws, we're up against a 15 foot tall steel floating arm trebuchet named Iron Maiden, which comes every year and it launched its pumpkin 160 yards. Technically, they beat us, but let's talk about that for a second. The throws were measured using a handheld rangefinder by someone standing off center while Iron Maiden throws were going diagonal and ours were going straight. And our pumpkin landed over the edge of a hill so we couldn't see exactly where it landed. So with all that measurement uncertainty and engineers being engineers, someone mentioned that the results were probably within the uncertainty of the measurement. If you know, you know. Iron Maiden took first place since they had been consistently throwing about 160 yards while we just had the one big one. Our others were around 120, 140. So yeah, it's a mostly record-breaking trebuchet. We built the farthest throwing machine, certainly per unit size, but we can only say that with 68% certainty. If you feel like this earned your subscription, click right up there. And if not, thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.